that's just their rules. Training, you guys. All right, so training, both of them are about the equivalent, like up to four weeks of training. I want to say three weeks with Spirit. I can't remember. I think it was three or four weeks. Um, it made four weeks because once you were supposed to do your OE, which is operational experience, some people did it the, on the last week. So it took kind of another week to stay in training. Um, as opposed to your OE for Southwest, it is incorporated in the four weeks. So it's not something that once you graduate, we don't know when we're gonna give you the OE date. It was incorporated, everybody did it that day. They were just flown on different planes from the same uh, base. Um, all right, so that was the, when it comes to training. Now, the pay was a bit better. Um, I don't know if it's because there was less weeks with uh, Spirit, <laughs> but Spirit gave you a card, and I believe there was an amount of 625, which was almost four years ago. As opposed to Southwest, Southwest, you almost received 960 or 970, so you almost get $1,000, so there's a big difference, but I think if they've added a week to the training, which is four weeks, then it's understandable that they give you a little more money. Now, when it came to training also, as a flight attendant perspective, one puts you in a hotel, the other one puts you in a hotel. Now, one puts you in a hotel that's with a roommate, okay, which was Spirit, and, and again, that was before COVID, so I don't know how things were. Now, I know that for Southwest, you had your own hotel room, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that now they do it like that ever since COVID, but I, I don't know, I can't, I don't know the answers to that. I will have to research that as well. Um, but the good thing is that now if you do training, um, they put you alone in the room, which is more expensive for the airline, but at the same time, it saves you from being sick or being bothered and you can concentrate and be alone, you guys. You don't have to deal with another person that's either singing in the middle of the night or taking a shower. <coughs> it's really hard to cohabitate with someone. It really is. Um, so that's the difference between the two airlines right there. Also, let's see here, I have a bunch of stuff here. Oh, so Southwest has their own university. So the good thing is when you're studying, you're studying at their university, they have everything there. They have a simulator, they have another simulator that you could actually study in. So a lot of our practice was made in a plane. So our daily class was in a plane, you guys. We would sit in a plane, there was huge screen, and I, I might have a little picture of that, there was um, TV screens everywhere and they would kind of show you, they could actually see what you're doing from the screen without being inside the plane. Although there's openings so they could see through the plane, there's openings, the windows are super extra large so they can see what you're doing, but they can look up at the, um, the screen and there's more than one um, professor or one teacher um, and what they do is if let's say they're in charge of watching you, they'll be looking at screen A and if um, the teacher too is taking care of watching the second student, they're looking at the screen B and C and D and E and they have multiple screens so they can watch you in the plane what you're doing and rate you. And when you're done, as you get out of that simulator, they'll be like, I didn't like this or I like that or you need improvement in that, you need improvement in this um, or you haven't passed so you need to redo it. Um, so they don't have to be inside the plane but they can see what you're doing. So we're getting that practice already in a plane which is fantastic. Now that's the advantage of being with Southwest is that they have all that inside of their university, you guys. They do, um, which was so impressive to me because I was trained in a kind of like a building in a classroom, okay? So I was sitting there daily and we were just doing, going about our things. And then if we had a simulator to do our, um, our drill, um, but that was only used once or twice to open the door or to slide. So we went to that drill kind of location, but it wasn't something that we studied in, if you understand. The university, basically you have everything there, including cafeterias. Now the beauty of the cafeteria is that not only did they give you that gift card, but you can use that gift card, you know, or that visa card at the cafeteria, at their, you know, um, at their establishment, and you can basically use all of their services. So the beauty of it all is you had such a variety of things to choose from 
food wise if you didn't you know if you wanted some fresh salad there was a salad bar and there was a variety of things you guys if you're vegan they had vegan choices if you wanted meat and these rotated literally daily you guys this were not the same vendors so there was an indian food one day they would rotate and would have probably spaghetti and italian themed the next and that was just one cafeteria with all these choices now they had another one in that same building well in another building that correspond with a little walkthrough or walkway um, that you can go to the other side and you have a variety as well that would change daily and they had so many choices in one area so we had tons and tons of food to choose from food was incredible a coffee there was a little coffee shop all this within that university which was so different from spirit where spirit like I said it was a building you take an elevator to your class you study in class you do walk to that building where there's a simulator to do your you know your drills and whatnot and then you kind of walk back but our studies were in a classroom so I've never was exposed to a university per se and if you wanted to eat for spirit you went downstairs there was one cafeteria there was a huge lineup of people and I'm talking a long lineup and you only had a limited time to eat so the problem with that is if there's one spot and everybody wants that either they run out of that food or you're waiting so long and you don't have time to eat so that was the drawback i think and hopefully they've changed that i know now with like postmate and um grab hub or grub hub or uh, <coughs> uber eats <coughs> they have uh, even uber eats you guys they have so much variety so you can call it and i remember i did with my girlfriends we called for food Fortunately, the food came so late and we weren't able to eat it on time, but we just kind of scoff it down real fast before class started. So there's, um, so just keep that in mind when it came to eating, it was a little complicated and you, you know, eating is important because you got to feel that brain, you guys, seriously. All right. So training the university was really cool for, um, Southwest. Um, the room, we talked about that, the credit card, the hotel, Okay, but I have to say, you guys, the hotel. So the hotel that we stayed in with Salt was, wow, was a castle. <laughs> it took me literally 20 to 30 minutes to walk from point A to point B. That's how big it was. I didn't realize how big it was until I went in and I was just in shock. Now, I might show you a picture of the hotel. I was in shock. Um, compared to Spirit, we stayed in a small hotel. Uh, we had a little van that came and picked us up, and the van had a kind of like a carrier attached to it where all our suitcase would be in if we had to kind of have uh, get approval with our equipment and see if our instructors wanted to approve the equipment um so we were in a small van the entire time compared to southwest now we were in huge greyhound buses very sophisticated lights blue lights on in the morning because it was 3 a.m they were always on time they were always punctual uh we were we were talking sophisticated bus here um and then if we wanted to put our suitcase it was right under the bus it was, there was no attachment so that was the different that now when it came to the culture cultures are somewhat similar okay so when you look at spirit culture it's more be yourself be your individual self be you know have that hair color have those nails be you don't be the cookie cutter flight attendant that everybody wants you to be um it's very youthful okay and it's very like be yourself which i enjoyed now when it came to southwest it's a very um geared toward love and respect and and you know cherish moments together and love and um you know giving back and receiving and and doing for others and respecting our passengers um and there was just a lot of emphasis on um you know that bound bonding that um love that togetherness which are really like and they emphasize that every single day and everything they do um from their logo their big hearts and i'll make post a little picture to their planes their belly of the planes there's hearts everywhere and they keep on talking about sharing the love being a family really really important <coughs> compared to um spirit you know they wanted you to have that spirit of youthfulness of happiness they want you to respect passengers especially when it came to calling them passenger they wanted you to call them guests you know uh welcome your guests give them an opportunity to travel at a 
at a low fare just to give them an opportunity that others wouldn't have um, and they did it a la carte. So there's a lot that goes into it uh, when it came to their motto, but um, both of them, they're pretty equal as far as, you know, loving your passenger, giving them a great experience. All right. Um, when it came to schedule and pay scale, you guys. Okay, so pay scale for um, Spirit, you're looking at about 22 start pay. <coughs> then you got you add that per diem, okay. And if you flew international, it's a little bit more. Versus almost 29 with the per diem for Southwest. So right off the bat, you're starting a little bit higher, okay. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility. I want to say with Southwest, just because you guys um your schedule okay let's start with schedule you have three days on four days off which is wonderful so now when you're on reserve you don't know which three days you're gonna get but you always know you have four consecutive days off which is great because you can always kind of work your schedule as opposed to um the schedule with spirit when you're starting out you it's all over the place you can have literally four days in a row then two days off then five days you have your 72 hours both of them have 72 hours minimum which means they'll pay you 72 regardless if you work it or not. Um, but it's a little scattered at the beginning. Um, you can always tweak it as you get, um, you have more seniority. You can tweak your schedule, which is the beauty of it all. But at the same time, you have to understand that your schedule is all over the place. You can kind of move days around um, just to make it a longer day off. There's flexibility too. But I think Southwest, when it comes to like, hey, if let's say I was vacationing, just to give you an example, in Texas, but I, I live in Arizona and my shift is starting, you can always call crew scheduling and say, hey, can I take a, a trip out of Texas, please? Uh, I'd like to start my shift there. And if you know, you've had enough seniority, they can actually tweak it around for you so you can leave out of there and get paid for it. <clears throat> so it's pretty flexible as well. So they both have advantages. Um, the thing I really liked about Spirit is that if you, for whatever reason, let's say you have a layover in Phoenix and you live in Phoenix, uh, but you don't want to use their hotel system and you want to stay home, or you have a friend in Texas and you have a layover and you want to stay at your friends and not use their hotel, they'll give you back, I think it was $50 for that hotel that you're not using. So you're saving them money and they're giving it to you, which I thought that was amazing. I think it was called like hotel buyback, I think. Um, so that was really, really great. Um, they don't have that with Southwest, but that was something that I really, really enjoyed. Now, as far as basis, you guys are almost equal. Um, as of March, 2022, Spirit um, maintains crew bases Atlanta, Atlantic City, Chicago, O'Hare, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Detroit, Fort Lauderdale, Vegas, Miami, Nashville, and Orlando. Now, I know they're going to add Phoenix to that because they are merging now with Frontier. Um, they're going to add to their base, which is fantastic. And I know um, a lot of the base will be added to that. Uh, now, as far as Southwest, there's 13 base. All right, you guys. So we have Atlanta, Baltimore, Chicago, Midway, Dallas, Love, Denver, Houston, Hobby, Las Vegas, Phoenix, um, uh, Oakland, and Orlando. And I know I'm missing two. I'm always missing two, but I never, uh, if you guys remember the two, just post them down below. I have them on the list and I didn't write them down. They're about the equivalent, but I believe Spirit will have a lot more now that they're merging and they'll add Phoenix to that list, which I was so excited about for them. All right. Um, so Southwest has 700 aircraft, you guys, total. That's crazy. Spirit has 177 aircrafts. Um, Southwest operates about 4,000 flights daily. That's insane. So obviously if you're going somewhere, you know, hopping on Southwest is gonna be the most convenient way, especially if you're commuting back home, you'll have more um, <clears throat> routes for you to get back home. Um, as far as Spirit, they operate 500 flights daily, you guys. This is, I got that online. I could be wrong, I'm just quoting what I read, okay? Um, now the cons and the positive, it says disadvantages of flying a Spirit. So the cons, let's start with the cons. Nothing but a personal item comes included in the base fare of your flight. That's true, everything you have to pay for, which we already covered, we already know that's who they are, and I've accepted it, and I think everybody should as well. I just love their motto, you know, you just don't bring it and save that money, right? Why pay $200 for your ticket when, when you think about it, your baggage is actually included, 
seriously. Um, so pay the $50, don't bring that much of a big bag, just bring a backpack and you're done. And you've saved yourself so much money flying, okay? Uh, it says leg room is a few inches tighter than other airline seat. Uh, tray table and armrests are very small. I'll put one here, a picture here. It is pretty small. I think it fits about a banana, if you were to put it down. Uh, and seats do not recline. That's true, you guys. Uh, all the seats in spirit do not recline, you guys. Okay, just keep that in mind. There's no free food or drink in flight. Um, okay, so that's true. Everything is a cost. Nothing is free, not even your glass of water. Uh, no in-flight entertainment on seat back uh, or in spirit app. That's true. You do not have any entertainment. Uh, like I said earlier, Wi-Fi is iffy. Some of them have it, some of them don't, but most of them don't have it yet. Pros on Spirit, you guys. The food on board is amazing, and it really is, and it costs, but it's not that bad. Your drinks aren't that bad, you guys. Um, you know, your snacks aren't that bad. You get some really nice trays, and you get some good food. So if you're hungry, most airlines don't have that kind of food, so go to Spirit. Um, tickets are super cheap, they are. And if you buy them at the airport, they're even cheaper. Sometimes you can buy them last minute and get them for a few dollars, like I kid you not. I have a video on my YouTube channel about that. Um, <clears throat> comfort yeah, comfortable front seats. If you've ever tried the comfortable front seats, you guys, there are probably, there's a few in the front, the first few rows. They are super, I mean, the leg room is great. The seat are super comfortable. Uh, it feels like a sofa, it really does. I love them. Uh, just remember you're flying newer planes. They are brand new. They're super safe. There's no records of any incident or accidents or crashes. So you're in good hands with Spirit. Many international destination, definitely you guys will have, I mean, anywhere you go, they have a lot more destinations than a lot of other airlines. Friendly staff, they're a lot of fun, you guys. Just give them a chance. They are really, I was one of them and I was the giddy one like hello how are you welcome aboard that's just who i am with any airlines that i work for anyways um yeah there's no history of crashes um and now they're expanding they're merging you guys um uh, they're gonna be awesome they're gonna be huge so i'm really excited for them now uh the pros for flying with southwest it's cheap it's cheap and you're getting so much for your buck all right no assigned seats you guys you definitely that is the best i mean as a flight attendant there's no issues with seats. That was one issues with most of the airlines that you fly with as a flight attendant. Hey, there's double seats. So someone is sitting on that seat, but two people have the same seat assignment because they overbooked that person or they overbooked. So what happens is there's a commotion, there's delays, we have to deal with that. Then we have to call someone, you know, to take care of the situation. Sometimes it ends up in fights. It's now we don't have to deal with that because everybody sits wherever they want. First come, first serve. So it's cheap, no assignment seats. Companion pass, you guys, if you have the credit card, you can actually add a companion, it's great. I did it for a while. <laughs> for about three years I had it. So you basically got the credit card, you automatically got to put a companion on there. So you got to fly for free with this person. So wherever you went, they flew with you for free. It was incredible. I think they still have it. So check out their credit card. Um, and then the lowest price is honored. Yes. So if you find a lower price than what you purchase on Southwest, they will give you the difference. They will. They'll actually give you the difference. That's insane. There's no airline that does that. And you, could, you can cancel things and you get a credit. Everything is done so quickly, you don't have to call. You can go on their website on Southwest and let's say you can't fly five minutes before the flight, you can cancel it, they'll give you a credit and you can rebook something, it's insane. Um, a lot of airlines don't do that. They'll give you like penalties and da 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 and they give you such a hard time to you know cancel it. Southwest, you could do everything online, super easy. I've done it before, I love them. Um, all right, uh, okay, so two free check bags. Isn't it great? doesn't matter it makes sure it's under 60 pounds but was it 40 pounds 40 50 60 i don't know i haven't paid for a suitcase in so long you guys so i don't even know i think it's 60. make sure it's under 60. um southwest credit card is awesome for the advantages i told you guys about a uh, reliable and punctual flights from southwest yeah they're really known to be punctual you guys um so is spirit spirit is not bad i mean they have a lot of delays but again don't blame spirit for the delays you guys 
just as southwest could be delayed it has nothing to do it could be like weather it could be it could be so many issues but it's not really the airline issue so you guys have to stop you don't want to get on that flight because the weather is bad and 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 risk your life because they're telling you you can't fly there's a lot of issues sometimes it's just weather wherever that plane is coming from there's just so many issues but stop blaming the airlines they're not doing anything they're getting you where they want to get to but the weather is to blame most of the time so all right um <clears throat> And the cons for flying with Southwest, you guys, they only have Boeing 737 planes. That's all they have. They don't have any variety of any kind. Same thing with uh, Spirit. They only have Airbuses. Okay. Uh, no meals included in Southwest. That's true. There's just little snacks. Uh, no seat confirmation on Southwest flights. So you don't, that's true. You don't have no seat confirmation when you come in. First come, first serve. So you don't know where you're going to sit. All right, make sure that you book 24 hours prior to your flight. Because if you don't do that and you book, let's say, a few hours before your flight, you might get like letter C because it goes by letters when you do board. So if you're letter A because you've basically confirmed, you know, 24 hours prior to because you checked in. If you check in way before, you are like A, so you're the first one in and you get to pick your seat. If you book a little bit later, you're B. And if you book too late, basically you checked in way too late, you're going to be one of the last letters, which means you're the last one on and you're going to have this shitty because usually the ones that get booked the most are by the window or by the aisle. So you always get a middle now. You're going to be stuck between someone. <laughs> so if you don't want that, try to check in. Make sure you check in 24 hours. Put your alarm if you have to. Or get an email notification. I usually get that. Um, boarding from front to back. Yes. Yeah, so when you do board Southwest, they board from front to back. Well, not necessarily. I mean, they'll call you... Um, They'll call, you know, everyone that needs to be boarded first because they have either a disability or something going on. And then once you go in, you could just kind of board and you go wherever. Um, and no airline partnership. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they don't have partnership just because if, let's say, you need to go to, I don't know, I'll give you an example, Italy. And then you have to take this plane and this plane and this plane where we're not affiliated with, let's say, that other airline that you're going to be flying to your international destination so basically when you're getting on they're not talking to the other airline making sure if you're delayed they're going to refund you and kind of put you they're not in alliance with other airlines per se so they have their own they're so independent that they're not even on expedia.com or hotwire or any airline um basically website that you can find they're not even on there you guys just because they have their own clientele. They've already built that rapport. They've already built that reputation. People love them. They don't need to see them. Uh, I don't think they need more than they need because all of our flights are basically full. That's how, you know, how popular and loved they are. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my video. I know it's kind of long. I don't know if I'm going to do a two part on this one as well, but I really enjoy this, um, sharing this video with you guys. It was so informative. So again, which one will you fly as a flight attendant now that you have so much information to make that educational decision as to which airline I want to work for and what to expect, you guys. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoy my video. Please, please, please subscribe. Um, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And also, just send me a little thank you. It could be a little donation, you guys. Everything is appreciated. Your help is also so, so, so appreciated. Love you guys. And hopefully see you on the next video. Bye.